Hey folks, it's Teresa, Stringfield Ridge Farm. Um, today, I decided to walk out to the herb garden with the chickens in tow <laughs> and uh, do a, just a little update on my herb gardens and um, talk a little bit. And I'll show you a few things that I've been um, harvesting. So I'm just gonna show a few things that I've been harvesting out of my herb garden and what I'm doing with those. And um, just take a look around. And uh, so uh, one thing that uh, really struck me, I guess um, I talked to a friend this morning who was watching some of our um, foraging videos, uh, our foraging playlist. We have a whole playlist of foraging wild things and uh, then we have a playlist also from this year where we started doing the walk in the woods and it just got a little too much for us we had been busy and you know grandkids ball games and my mom in the nursing home and work and uh, we got a little too busy to keep up with that but we would like to do those again soon uh, we've just been overwhelmingly busy like everybody else and uh, kind of uh, fell off of the uh, foraging videos for a little bit. Uh, we will get back into those soon, uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully if things calm down a little. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I've been out here harvesting in the herb garden today, uh, this morning. And the last few days, I, I started harvesting out in the herb garden a couple of weeks ago and uh, drying some things and uh, making... Um, you know, tinctures and, and teas and uh, just um, utilizing what I got. And that was uh, one topic that me and this friend talked about this morning uh, was that um, a lot of times we get too busy or forget to use what we've got and uh, especially foraging. Sometimes we get too busy to get out and gather that stuff. And uh, I know uh, last year, I ran completely out of elderberry syrup. I had, uh, I, I like to use dried elderberries for tea and I usually make elderberry syrup. And, um, and I had put some in the freezer. I got that out and made more el elderberry syrup and just still ran completely out. So obviously I didn't do enough of that. And we have enough, I can do more. So this year I'll be doing more of that. They're not quite ready yet, uh, won't be long. So uh, anyway, right now, uh, the last couple of weeks, I have been focusing on getting the stuff out of my herb garden and getting it dried and put up or, or um, you know, used in some way. So that's what I'm gonna show you what I've been up to. So let's go to the herb garden. So here's my herb garden. If you have followed along for very long with us, you know that we have six raised beds that Lee made for me for, um, for my herb gardens. And uh, he has a big garden up at the front of the property that he does. It is an in-ground garden that he puts some of the bigger crops in. And uh, he takes care of that. And I take care of this one. And um, so this year, I planted some sunflowers in mine. And uh, he always does sunflowers up there in his big garden. But uh, this year, I wanted to see how I done with them. And I was afraid that they would get too tall and just fall over and not have enough, enough depth in the raised beds to hold them up. But they've done pretty good. And uh, so I've already harvested some of the blooms off of one of those i will get the others soon because the blooms the yellow the yellow petals are good for viruses and colds as a tea uh, i'm sure you can make tincture or whatever out of them i use them as a tea when i have a cold or a virus or flu whatever um, so i had mixed that last year with um, mullen and drank that when I had the COVID. And um, it uh, really helped me a lot. I can't say, I still had to go through the time 
uh, you know, that it takes to get through a flu or a COVID or whatever. But I think that it helped me a lot as far as how I felt. And uh, so I'll be doing that again this year. I'm going to get all of our sunflower blooms. And then, of course, we end up saving the seeds. And uh, we give the seeds to mostly to our chickens. And we dry them some. We dry a few. We don't, we don't like sunflower seeds that well, uh, neither one of us. So a lot of that will go to uh, the chickens or, or whatever. And, uh, and uh, then uh, we'll save some to plant for the next year. But mostly I want the blooms, the petals, those yellow petals off of those sunflowers is what I'm really after. I love the beauty of them too, so I like to have them in my garden every year. But um, what I utilize is those yellow petals. Now, um, I did see a video. Um, I'm trying to think of who it was. It was... Um, I'll, I'll put that in the description below. Because I cannot think right now. Or I'll type that name of that channel across here. Uh, she was talking to someone about using uh, making seed oil and they were talking about using different kinds of seeds to make your own oil you can press your own oil and uh, this video that she had she was talking to a fella that sells the actual presses to press um, different seeds into oil and one of those was sunflower uh, you could make your own sunflower seed oil so I may be looking into that soon um, it was also, there was other things that you could make, not just uh, sunflower, but other seed oils and nut oils that you could do. Um, I can't remember them all right now, but, um, but anyway, I, the one only, main one I thought of when he was talking about it was, oh, we always have all them sunflower seeds. I could make sunflower seed oil if I got one of those presses. So that'd be awesome. But anyway, I will uh, link that video in the description below and uh, you can watch that and check that out. So I have my giant marigolds again. I said I wasn't going to do too many marigolds this year and I didn't do near as many as I did last year, but I did do some um, marigolds and um, um, uh, I have the giant marigolds that I got from uh, Bub, and then I have regular uh, marigolds that uh, um, I've gotten from different people um, over the years in seed swaps and things, and so I, I keep marigolds. I love marigolds. Anyway, so here is a pepper plant and my echinacea back there. And a tomato plant. Now, I did let my tomato plants kind of get out of hand again this year. <laughs> I'm good about that. Uh, Lee has tomato plants up at the big garden at the front property. He keeps his in better order than I do. Mine kind of start falling all over the place. <laughs> and I don't uh, trim them back enough is what happens. Uh, there's a squash plant in there. More tomato plants. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go down through here and then I'm going to come back and show you the herbs I've been using. So there's tomato plant, Swiss chard, uh, my scarlet runner beans are on my arches. Uh, and there's more uh, pepper plants in there. A yarrow I've been utilizing. I'll talk about that in a minute. And my mint has just gone wild. Always does. And my lemon balm, more tomato plants, more giant um, marigolds back there, and lots more tomato plants. I'll show you those up close in a minute and tell you what those are. And catnip and my comfrey, more tomato plants, and another scarlet runner bean. And there's some of my smaller marigolds. So we'll go inside the uh, fence here and I will show you the herbs I've been working on. 
So there you go. Okay, let's see. Where do we want to start? Uh, this is my, um, let's see if I can back, back out of this. This is my ashwagandha. I grew a lot of ashwagandha last year and had a bunch of seeds. I only grew two this year because I still have a lot. And uh, he used the root, but I saved these seeds. Those seeds have just um, loaded with little seeds. Those are the seed pods, and then they're loaded with little seeds after these turn red. But that's one of my ashwagandhas. And I use the root of that for, um, it's good for stress and things. I put, I mix it, I dry the root and, uh, and, uh, then grind it up and mix it in with my nighttime pill that I take. I also, uh, have thrown some in tea, but, uh, mostly in my nighttime medicine, uh, my nighttime pill that I have made up my own pills and, uh, Use some of that in there. And let's see. Where are we going to go first? Okay. There's my echinacea. It's doing really good. I haven't used that yet uh, this year. I have a... Ooh. This is my um, Mad Hatter uh, peppers. They're doing really good, but I had a little rotten one on there. So I'm going to throw that out of here. So, um, I have more Swiss, Swiss chard over there. I've been, uh, cutting that now. It's gotten kind of, uh, uh, bitter. So I've been cutting that and giving to the, uh, uh, rabbits. The rabbits are enjoying that. And it's just kind of random in here. Here's my hibiscus. I have some young hibiscus. I have several of those that I got from, uh, Nanny Joyce, um, uh, Buddy's mom and they're doing really good i have three or four of those growing they're small still but they'll get there let's see okay also have some basils that i've been cutting on there's my basil i've been cutting i've got several of those i just spread them out in different spots and uh, i've been cutting on those and using those and around the tomato plants more swiss chard that i've been cutting and giving to the rabbits but here's my uh yarrow so this was a red or pink whatever you call it pink colored uh yarrow and um i have been cutting some of that here's the yarrow it's got a real uh ferny like uh leaf and the blooms are spent, but uh, I have been cutting on the yarrow and drying that. And then I powder it and uh, use it for a uh, blood stopper. It stops bleeding. So I have a whole jar full of dried yarrow. You can use it fresh too, but I have been drying it. There's a few weeds in here, y'all. Get those out. Anyway, so I have been utilizing my yarrow. I've cut quite a bit off of there, but I'm uh, trying to let some of these seeds stay. And uh, anyway, that's the only thing I have done with the yarrow is break off a fresh piece and use to stop a bleeding. Or I have a whole jar of it that I have um, dried and powdered for stopping bleeding so that's in my herbal cabinet and uh whew, it's warm out here uh -huh. i also have a lot of spinach this is the malabar spinach and i have a bunch of that growing i have used that and used that and it just keeps popping out more the more I use it, the more it pops out. I've got several of those in my herb gardens. And I've even cut some of that and gave to the rabbits. 
but uh, it just keeps growing. The more I cut it, the more it grows, it seems like. And I've got several of those throughout. So, here's my, my arch with my scarlet runner beans. Um, I've got some eggplants in here. I've only picked one of those. I've got two eggplants in here. And I've gotten one eggplant off of them, which uh, we don't use a whole lot. This is a uh, sage. This is a not the regular type of sage that I'm used to using. It's a different type of sage. And I didn't realize that until it came up and I was like, what the heck is that? I thought that was sage. Well, come to find out it is a type of sage. I can't remember the name of it. But I'm going to have to look it up and learn <laughs> and learn a little bit about it because it is not the regular type of sage that I'm used to having. So I've got to look that one up and get familiar with it. So, okay, over here on the other side, I have a lot of beautiful lemon balm. And I have been using a lot of that. I have dried a whole lot of lemon balm to use as tea. Um, I have dried it and put it in my um, my sleepy time um, herbal tea blend. And uh, it's really good for stress and help you uh, relax and sleep. So I have been drying a whole lot of that for uh, for this next year. <laughs> And using it, you can use it fresh. You don't have to dry it. You can use it fresh or you can dry it. And a lot of that's going to seed. So it'll be more of that next year. I don't care if it takes over the whole bed. I love lemon balm. So there's some more basil in there. I've been cutting on. And some more pepper plants. Um, that's another. This one is a uh, Trinidad the uh, trinidad perfume pepper they're not ready yet and then another one of the um, mad hatter peppers none of those have gotten ready yet uh, this is my catnip so um I, I planted catnip and it got out of hand i've pulled a lot of it out of there but boy the smell oh it smells so good and uh, I have learned that catnip is uh, really good for stress too. So I have been mixing the catnip and the lemon balm in my nighttime tea. And uh, and I use I don't use ju I don't just use it for nighttime. Um, if I'm stressed out during the day, I'll use it too. Uh, but anyway, I stress out a lot, so I use a lot of tea. <laughs> anyway. Whew, it's hot out here. Anyway, that's what I've been using a lot of is the uh, lemon balm and the catnip. And then my dill. My dill done pretty good this year. This is just a few little pieces of it left because I have cut and cut and cut on it. And used a whole lot of dill making pickles this year. And so I've been using a lot of that. And then the comfrey. I have dug comfrey out of there several times and used it and I gave away comfrey last year. I gave, uh, I, I mailed comfrey to several. Well, I just said it was hot out there. It was so hot that my phone died. <laughs> my phone got overheated and died while I was talking about the comfrey. So uh, I have given away comfrey to several subscribers last year. And I pulled a lot of it out and used, uh, uh, put it in a, a trash can and filled it up with water and made um, a, a comfrey tea for compost tea for the garden, and uh, used that a lot last year. So I don't have just a ton of comfrey right now, but it will spread out in that bed and probably take over that bed. Between it and the catnip, I will have to really uh, keep pulling those out of there and, 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 you know, cutting them back. Uh, but the comfrey I have made, uh, oils out of to, uh, to make salve. And I've been using that in my, 
um, my super salve, my super pain reliever salve. I've been using the comfrey in that and uh, it's good for a lot of stuff. So I have made oils out of that and um, it's really good for wound uh, healing, healing bones and things. And so I love to keep comfrey around. Um, so I had to get in here and sit on the porch a minute and get cooled down and get my phone cooled down <laughs> to finish this. But uh, that's my little garden tour, my little herb garden tour. And um, so also, um, whew, I'm telling y'all it's hot. Also, um, I was talking about that I had talked to my friend and we were talking about um, foraging and using herbs and things. And she was watching my um, Rose of Sharon video. Uh, she's got several Rose of Sharon and crepe myrtles. And I've never done a crepe myrtle video because I really haven't used that. Uh, we don't have a crepe myrtle on our property. We did it one time, but it was right in front of where we wanted to put our porch when we built this house and we took it out. Um, so I have done Rosa Sharon videos because I have Rosa Sharon. I haven't done crepe myrtle, but I don't know a lot about crepe myrtle really. I know my Mom had a crepe, had several crepe myrtles. My grandma's had crepe myrtles. We always had crepe myrtles around the property, but um, I don't remember what they ever used it for or even if they used it. <clears throat> but Miss Patty, my friend, Miss Patty, she was telling me that she used it. And um, she used it at a tea. So that she had a Rose of Sharon crepe myrtle tea that she was drinking on and uh, so I'll be looking into that uh, but um, we were talking about how we really don't utilize as um, a as much as we should and um, and I said you know talk it she was watching my Rose of Sharon video and our playlist and I said you know um I'm not a great teacher. Me or Lee, neither one are very good teachers of this stuff. But the important thing that we want to get across is to learn it and use it. And uh, so you can watch our videos. You can watch anybody else's videos. I highly recommend watching a lot of videos on something and maybe even reading up on it. Uh, you know, get a, get a book get a book or read online or watch several videos, get all the knowledge you can about the plants around you and about the herbs you can grow and the plants around you. And uh, some of them are edible, some of them are medicinal, but most of them are both. Most of them are edible and medicinal. So I always say if we just used them more, we would probably be a whole lot healthier if we just ate more of the wild plants and the herbs and things because so many of them are edible and medicinal. So, learn your foraging, learn your herbs, and, um, you know, and that's what we encourage. We're not good teachers, but we encourage that you learn these things. So, thanks for watching, and, um, We'll be trying to do more videos soon. Maybe we'll pick up on our foraging videos and get some more of those done. We really need to, and there's so much to forage right now. There's just so much uh, that you can forage and eat and medicinal, and, uh, and we really need to get back on that, not necessarily to teach you anything, but to encourage you to learn it. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.